And then we have the Cavan senior footballers and, um, you know, I'm laughing straight away when I'm doing this uh, intro here just because Cavan, I mean, what on earth has gone wrong with them in the past couple of years? I mean, how on earth are they in Division 4? It's quite incredible really, isn't it? The fact that a side that wins an Ulster Championship um, in the space of 13 months, they're in Division 4. It's quite incredible. It really, really is. But yeah, we spoke about all things Cavan today. I was delighted to speak with John McMahon from the JMac podcast who came on the show today to preview all things Cavan ahead of 2022. We really just delved into what has gone wrong for Cavan last year, having been relegated to Division 4, and how can Cavan put things right in 2022. We also spoke a bit about the Talchian Cup as well. Could Cavan maybe be front runners for that? Could Cavan have two days out in Crow Park this year as opposed to one? That would certainly be uh, quite a bit of a story as well. So we spoke about all things Cavan ahead of 2022, looking at maybe some new players to come into the panel some potential fresh faces, how will they approach Division 4, how might, might they get on in the Ulster Senior Football Championship as well. So we spoke about all things Cavan, and um, yeah, let's get straight into it. Before we get straight into the podcast, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors, D Kirby GA Star. Declan Kirby GA Star Championship Journey. It's a series of GA team children's books written by primary school teacher and GA coach Michael Egan. You can check it out in the link in the description down below, of course, as well. Follow the trials and tribulations of Declan Kirby and his team at Smith Green Gaelic Football Club, recently formed a promising GA team. The book is now available in Easons and all good bookshops, so check it out in the description down below and let's get straight into it okay so i'm delighted to be joined here now by john mcmahon of the jmac podcast we're here to preview the cavan senior footballers ahead of the upcoming 2022 ga season that's literally just around the corner now so yeah john great to have you on how's things man you're you're keeping well been a while i suppose since uh since i've had you on the show anyways yeah yeah all good Aaron. all good thank god uh it's just Trudging along with this COVID stuff, Aaron. So it's 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 brilliant to have the GA back. Thank God, um, it gives us a real thing to focus on. I know we were talking off air, but trials and tribulations of Liverpool, Man United, and how boring soccer can be to watch if you're not getting good results and stuff like that. So thank God we have our county football back. Um, in earnest, really at this stage. Also, you you Dublin's flying back in the O'Boran Cup. Cavs had a good good uh, league, uh, kind of cup campaign so far. So. Yeah, no, it's trucking along and uh, all good and looking forward to the year myself. Uh, obviously, I'll have you on board uh, as the JMAC Podcast Pundit with the rest of the fellas. So, delighted to have you on board, there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'll be, I'll be sure to leave down a link down below. Anyway, for anyone who can check out your podcast in due process, I'll definitely be on it a good few times this year anyways to preview a lot of the different games. But you're all set for another, I suppose, bumper roller coaster year supporting Cavan. I suppose, as it's been over the past couple of years because it seems to be the highest of highs at times and the lowest of lows with Cavan. It seems to be either high up here or, or, or all the way down here. So you're all set for another roller coaster year anyways. Yeah, Aaron, yeah. And I am, I am. It probably feels like Groundhog Day could have chatted about all this. But like I know probably around this time last year we were talking about the Cavan season. For the year ahead, we, we were talking about Division 3. Oh, no bother. We go straight back up and, you know, look what happened. I went down to Division 4. So... It's real tunnel vision this year, Aaron. Um, eyes in the prize stuff. And, I, you know, I, I was only talking to Cav at 97, Ulster final, winning captain Stephen King there today. And he was just saying, it's, it's, it's embarrassing being down there. And, you know, if it's come, if, them, if they're out of the words, it's coming from his mouth. Uh, that probably speaks volume. And that, look, it is embarrassing. I think Cav, and the, it, it's pride of place, Aaron. It's pride, pride in the jersey. And um, we really can't be staying in Division 4 for... More the year anyway. We really need to get out of there, um, and you know we I, I've, I've said this to you millions of times. It's a football mad county, um, and I think you know the, the form so far we've uh, showed uh, really is off a Division Two standard team. So yeah, it, it, look, it, it's going to be I think a bumpy enough road. I don't think it'll be as easy as people think. I think some of the games we will be playing with Leitrim from way first, Leitrim, Andy Moran, they'll be absolutely mad to push one over down Carrick and Shannon, um, and the Mulligans back as me and you talked discussed before, um. You know, Leitrim have some absolutely brilliant forwards. The, uh, the club uh, scene in Leitrim is actually very strong at the minute. Uh, we've seen in the county final some lovely, lovely forwards on display. So that'll be a tight game. And the likes of London and Wexford and Waterford. And, you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, league, definitely, Aaron. And obviously the championship will look after itself after that. But um, I was only saying to a fellow last night, you know, if you're looking to get away for a weekend, there's some uh, juicy uh, spots to head there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. 
could make a, a weekend out of it and, and make the most of it maybe while you have it. Like a 15 point win over Tyrone, like I know it's only pre season. And look, I was kind of having a bit of crack on, on Twitter with a few different people and, and all the rest. Like we, we do know it's all pre season and Tyrone were away in a whole day and all the rest. And but I mean, you know, from a cabin point of view, like that is impressive enough, like to put a 15 point victory past them. It is pre season and all the rest, but I suppose the signs are good, anyways, that maybe you're going to hit the ground running in, in Division 4. Yeah, God, Division 4, Aaron, Jesus Christ, you have to say that. Uh, yeah, look, Aaron, I think we need a bit of perspective here, fairly sharp. And I know obviously a lot of people are kind of jumping on the bandwagon and all. Oh, it's a fantastic win for Calvin. Uh, I suppose let's put it into perspective. You know, that throw team, you know, a lot of lads were in Miami, you know, a lot of lads that started actually didn't go to Miami, so they were kind of staying put into their own bits and pieces. But look, it wasn't, as I said to a couple of lads in the last couple of days, you know, Toronto were more interested in playing that game than I do. I'm playing cricket out there, Aaron. So uh, it, it was a completely different cat to fish. Good win. Um, I know we've blooded a lot of young lads kind of for, for that game and obviously the RMI game as well. Um, showed very well up front. Paddy Lynch was a great game. Obviously, Grove and Cairn got mad at a match two games in a row. But I suppose... It's essential that Garo can kind of follow that, you know, that form up the, now in the league because, you know, it's all well and good against Sooner, against Armagh and Tyrone and Dr. McKenna Cup games. But, you know, yeah, it's, it, the proof of the pudding will be in the league, Aaron, the important games, the crunch, the last five, ten minutes of games. Like, it's all well and good, Aaron, or sorry, Garo kicking, you know, six or seven points in nothing games. We need that man in the big games. I said that to last year. Um, good start, I suppose, you know, nothing massively to complain about, but really when you look at it, we had chances to beat our ma, we weren't clinical up, up front. And you know, I know Paddy Lynch really was trying. He had a very good game against throw against Throne, of course, but just that bit of cutting edge, killer instinct up front. But uh look, division four, it's gonna be a big, big learning curve. Um to my knowledge, my time support Calvin, we've never been there before, so it'll be all new. Um so yeah, it'll just take a lot of getting used there. Yeah, and what's the general feeling been like really since that relegation last year from Division 3? Because I think it definitely did, as you were saying there, catch a lot of people by surprise when he's were beaten by Wicklow. So, like, what's the what's the general consensus been like amongst Cavan supporters about this Cavan team? Because, as we were saying previously, like, plenty of good moments there in 2020, but last year it did just seem to, to go off the ball. So what's the, the general feeling or general consensus been like from Cavan supporters in the past year or so? Yeah, yeah, look, look at it, probably just devastation really, Aaron, like, because I think obviously, you know, you, you go into that league campaign last year, like we talked about, right, beat Fermanagh, I know Fermanagh made it very hard for us, and obviously they got over the line against us, we obviously did beat Longford, and, you know, to go to Navin and let Wicklow beat you in a, in a playoff is just, it just kind of bears thinking, Aaron, really. And I, I think, you know, the mood and general vibes definitely when we were relegated, I know it's probably in the middle of the lockdown and, you know, we're, you know, very big restrictions are in. So we nearly didn't have much of a chance to nearly get uh, talking to people about it. So mm. obviously people probably uh, through social media and bits and pieces were talking about it. But I know, look, it's just completely, it's it's just not territory you want to be in. And it's just, you know, I'd say the general mood probably hasn't been fantastic the last couple of months. And, you know, obviously, you know, Obviously, a decent start to the year so far, but definitely not nothing too much to get excited about because a bit of perspective in terms of you know the throne team that was put out, and obviously Armagh had a strong enough team out, we could have probably bet them. So that's another day's conversation. But no, I'd say the move probably quite low. But again, you know, hope those spring eternal, Aaron. You know, you know, Shawnee Johnson's come in as a forwards coach there. Ryan McBenham has come in as I think a general coach or defenders coach, and obviously them lads. Years of experience behind their uh, on their belts as well, so you know they're they were two very very good additions, and hopefully they can give Mickey a, a bigger hand as possible. So, but I'd say look at up until maybe until the summer end. But I know look at it, it's it's you know football's a funny thing too. Like you're kind of thinking right, okay, I just don't want to watch Cavan again. Nearly after that Tyrone game, even in the championship, just a nice wee break. But it's funny too. The turn of the new year, you're always thinking, right, what games do we have? Look forward to the McKenna Cup and another year of potential madness, who knows? But um, yeah, I'd say the mood was pretty low within the camp. 2020 was a very, very good year, of course. Us, the champions, all our semi-final against yourselves. Obviously, you still go over the line against us, but positivity. But just to follow up the year we had in 2020 to the year we had 2021, just probably the five description, really. So it's really up to the players, management team, everyone involved within the team now to just get us the hell out of Division 4, Aaron, and God, to even be talking about that is just mad, Aaron, and, you know, let's be honest about it. 
Yeah, because I went back and had a look at some of, I suppose, Cavan's results really in the league over the past three years under Mickey Graham and five wins in, in 18 games. I don't know if maybe that's a record in terms of, you know, the, the least amount of wins over a, a three-year period or maybe for a, a new manager coming in. Like, what do you think it is with, with Cavan in the league and maybe their inconsistencies? Because it does seem in the championship, all right, fair enough, you, you played Tyrone last year in the first game, it's always going to be tough. But in the other two years, like, the consistency seems to be there in the in the Ulster Championship. It just seems to be in the league that he seems to be very slow out of the blocks. Like, what, what do you think the reason is for that? Well, regarding the slower the blocks, we need to be, you know, we need to be ten, 100 miles an hour um, for the league coming up because, you know, we can't take the foot of the pedal at all. And in fairness, Mickey has kind of put his intentions in place because, you know, we we, we we ran the bench against Tyrone. I think we had our strongest team out at one stage. So that really does show us attention for this year. But, you know, Mickey has been fairly vocal in the past, but not really caring about the league and not really putting much emphasis into it. But I just think for a county the size we of uh, the size of us, and um, for the support, you know, the growth towards football, it just simply isn't good enough and not acceptable to not care about the league because you know Calvin wants to go to the league games and like they don't want to be seen. They don't want like, Calvin do not want to be getting back every week. The fans did not want to see that. Like also champions the year before, and um, the Fermanagh game down at Brewster Park, poor performance that day. Like it's just. You need to be top of the pops. And I think I hear, even heard Mickey Graham on, on the sideline during the week. Like he just has, he was ferocious and he, he must just be taken this year with all guns blazing. He's dead right. But just, I just think that mentality that he had towards the league and not caring about it was just a not good enough mentality to have. Because I think if you're a manager, you're setting up. I know championship support and a lot of people put the emphasis into it, but the league is such an important building block. And like for him to openly say to lads about Cavan or wherever you might have said it to um, face to face and be vocal about not caring about the league, it's just it's probably ridiculous comments to make, Aaron, because it's so important. Um, when you're in a football mad county like Calvin is and to be coming out with comments like that and not maybe caring about results and all that kind of crack, it's just ludicrous. We are where we are now, Division 4. It is embarrassing. Um, and Jesus, a proud football tradition uh, tradition like Calvin does have. Uh, we really need to get all guns blazing for uh, Park Sean against Leitrim because uh, we can't take any prisoners this year and that's a fact. Yeah, like, because I, I suppose as well, like, you, you see with a lot of teams, really, like, the league is the bread and butter. Like, you look at teams like Clare and Offaly now as well, who've used the league really, really well, used the league to build and build consistency, build positivity. Because at the end of the day, winning breeds success. You know, when you win games, that's when you'll gain that success and that's when you can move forward. Like, so I suppose from a, from a Cavan point of view, it has been quite strange, really, to see all that inconsistency in the league because we know the players are there we know the the potential is there to beat teams like Wicklow and Fermanagh obviously who he's lost to last year so I'd imagine it has been very frustrating sort of watching that you know from from a home obviously watching that on TV because you know the, the potential is definitely there to push on and kick on but it just seems with Cavan that it can't seem to, to quite do that at the minute yeah, especially in the league anyways Ah oh, yeah like that's probably the elephant in the room but in fairness though a lot of the teams we kind of did play, like, and obviously, you know, win the Ulster Championship in 2020, like, you know, for Mana, you know, we've always had a very, very good record against Fermanagh, home and away. So they were obviously thinking, right, let's set our stone down early and let's, you know, go out and beat these lads. You know, they set up quite defensively, they've done well, got the win. Obviously, we bet Longford at home and then yeah, just that disaster against Wicklow. So, you know, it's just about kind of taking each game on its merits now and just really kind of just... Thinking with Division 4 that realistically, and I said this, Joff Air, like every team in that division will make life difficult for us. And that's a fact. You know, we'll, we'll, the big journeys we'll have to do, even the home games, like it 100, 110% will not be easy. So it's just about keeping that consistency. And even like, you know, Grove McCarran got man of the match in the Armagh game, just throne game. It's so important that he can, you know, push on with that now and, you know, you know, bring that form into the league and just kind of keep pushing on and just having that confidence that right I am six foot three six foot four I'm left foot right foot push lads out of his way because Groves had this kind of tendency in the past to just say you know just you know look for a handy free or you know just let lads bully him he should be the mm. bullier like he like he is a huge mammoth of a man Michael Murphy type man um so even for him to just give it, like, he's, what, 31, 30 now. So, like, you know, the GA clock runs very quick. So we got another one or two years at the top level, so you wouldn't know. 
if he keeps himself right. But no, it's just damn little kind of little things like that. Giving Paddy Lynch the full forward as much game time as possible. And just kind of mind his back, you see, as well. So that's a great addition. So just believing in these lads, building a good run of consistency and just, you know, keeping, keeping at it. Because last year really was a freak year. Obviously, the league, it was a shortened league. So you're thinking maybe this year, the length of league, um, obviously the championship will come around very quickly. So you're thinking more games, more confidence, and presuming training is going well. In a lot of glimpses in that kind of Tyrone game, you see what we can do. We move the ball well. Okay, I know Tyrone didn't have the strongest team out. It was like the under-21 team from last year, my other team, whatever you're having yourself. But we can't, there's so much potential that you, you, you hit the nail in the head. When we move the ball quick, we have the force to do damage. We can defend well. Ray Gadigan's going to give it another year. So the plans are in place. We just need to implement the Marin. Yeah, and I suppose as well, like you were mentioning there, like that Fermanagh game and I suppose Wicklow as well, like that's probably a thing as well with, with Cavan maybe that's maybe a worry going into Division 4 is because of what you achieved in 2020 and because you're, you know, I suppose nearly like one of the, not necessarily like a big hitter or a massively huge team going down there, but for sides in Division 4, like you're at the likes of your Waterfords, you know, or your Sligos or whatever, like they're probably going to raise their game and give maybe an extra 10 to 15 percent against a team like Cavan because it's probably a rare occasion that you get to play teams like that. Like, I often remember, I think it was maybe 10, 12 years ago that year when Dublin were in Division Two, and there were a couple of games we struggled in because, mm. you know, all of a sudden you're going to places that you wouldn't normally go. You know, maybe you're going away to teams like Limerick or you're going away to teams like Offaly, and all of a sudden, you know, for, for th- those kind of crowds and for those supporters, it's very rare to get a team like that showing up on your doorstep so the atmosphere kind of increases maybe that extra five to ten percent so maybe for Cavan I'd imagine like that away game against Leitrim really sort of setting the standard and and I suppose starting fast will be crucial because you know if you if you have one or two defeats early on then all of a sudden you're you're playing the catch-up game and that's really where the, the problems could come yeah 100 percent Ireland you're looking at that Leitrim game and I, can, I keep saying, I suppose, all the hype and media attention that is going to be around it. Andy Moore and Johnny Johnson, Ricey McMenamin, all them kind of factors coming into the game. And obviously that'll be so interesting to watch on for him. But, you know, just taking each game, like, you know, Leitrim, like, obviously give the teams, each team we do play that kind of respect that they deserve. You know, they are where they are for the reasons, you know, everyone knows. But, you know, it's just taking every game with that just bit of confidence and just thinking, right, lads, this is the situation we're in. How do we get out of this situation? We perform it to the standards we can perform to. We play in the way we can play and just implement the game plans. It doesn't over kind of complicate complicated for the players. And I just think obviously we've seen a couple of new additions into the cabin team. Evan Finnegan, the cornerback, he done well the other night. I think Green O'Neill's kind of or yeah, Ryan Reed for Body Connell, actually. Yeah. So he he's he's done quite well when he came on the last couple of times, keeping Riley for putting his bridge and Lads like that kind of make trying to make the breakthrough. And it's it's great to see that bit of hunger for the Calvin jersey. So just each game, like realistically, every team we hopefully should play, you're probably hopefully looking at maybe four or five point wins, like the maybe the like likes of Leitrim, as you say, like really just kind of go at it, quick starts and just try to have the game put to bed by half time. Because like we have the players to do it. We just that kind of quick ball, the quick transitioning and up the pitch and just Utilizing the big fellas that we have inside, in fairness, and if, you know, Paddy Lynch again, I, I'm referencing him again, but he was superb against their own in fairness team. So, you no, know, having that confidence and belief within ourselves, lads, that we are we are a Division Two team, realistically, middle of the rope in the Division Two team. We should be here, right? Let's prove a point. Let's just all the naysayers, all the criticism we've got for the last year. Let's put all that to bed and just attack every game, and see how it goes because. We shouldn't be there, Aaron. And yeah, <laughs> that's my 10 pence on it. Yeah, because I'd say like huge pressure on, on Mickey Graham as well. Like, I'd imagine he wants to write that wrong as well because, you know, he doesn't want his own legacy tarnished in many ways, like to have a huge achievement, like what he done with, with Kevin obviously winning that Ulster title. Even you think back to when he won a, a Leinster Club Senior Football Championship with Mullen, Mullen Yachter, like he's a, he definitely is a great manager. And, you know, you don't, beat the likes of your Donegals and your Monaghans by fluke like it was a well-earned Ulster title win so you know is there much pressure on him do you think going into this year or do you think even like if things were to go wrong in Division 4 maybe they might cut their losses because it's a tricky one isn't it because like he did win an Ulster title so you know and they don't come Uh, around too often for for a team like Cavan yeah like I put the one thing you'd have to say with that Aaron is and I know obviously winning the Ulster in 2020 short season COVID year again and 
Everton can win with that. But I think that looks the title win. I think it just does have to, a line does have to be drawn in the sand with it at this stage because I think, you know, it's 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 water under the bridge. We're in Division Four. You know, if that's not much of it, if that's not much more of an incentive to go and have a good year this year, I don't know what will be. Pressure, I think there is going to be pressure on them because, you know, with the back in the cab and have um, the media talk, to, to talk about it, you know, us and ourselves and Tipperary to be in Vision 4, so all the noise that comes with that. I think there is pressure. Uh, Mickey is a cute man. You know, having, getting Rice and Shawnee in, that's obviously very astute kind of management from him. Um, I know Darren Cape kind of left the panel um, or left the management team a couple of months ago, so he, he's gone. New blood in. So I think it was just he had to get every plan in place. He had to get everything right. No better, like he, they're two are great additions to the cabin team. It's brilliant to see. So hopefully them men can really kind of give the cabin that's good hand as I said at the start of all this. But yeah, pressure, hundred ten percent. Because as you say, if there's a few hiccups, you could be looking at the exit door for him. So he knows that. Everyone knows that. So it's just about leaving no stone left unturned. Um, a big thing you would have to say is I said this at the start. You know. The panel of players we've had for the McKenna Cup, we ran the bench. I think we basically gave everyone a, gave everyone a game against Throne and everyone actually done very well. You know, there's no lads kind of saying, oh yeah, no, I don't fancy it now. Like even when you see the likes of Grove McCarron and like he normally maybe comes back for the league. You know, he's fight all guns blazing. Paddy Lynch, Connor Moyna, uh, Jared Smith, uh, wing, wing, or wing forward, uh, Ray Galligan. So basically, whoever's fit and about seems to be there. Um, I know Gowna got to the final as well. There doesn't seem to be many Gowna lads there at the minute. And same with Rammer, actually. Maybe there's a bit of a break for them boys. But yeah, I just think Aaron is the case. It's just leaving no stone unturned because uh, yeah, it's, it's a big, big year for Calvin uh, football as a whole, Aaron, really. Any new players do you think that might come into the panel there? Like I suppose you mentioned Rammer United and Gowna. Like, could there be many players in there that maybe could come into the frame in the league maybe later in the year or, or maybe they'll come back in for you know match day two or match day three yeah well I suppose the elephant in the room probably and probably it's a discussion around a lot of fans in the last while James Brady as I referenced to you a million times before he kicked 248 in the Calvin Club Championship so that would be a man you definitely would want to bring in but I think word in the street is he doesn't seem to have much of a grow for it which is probably mind-boggling because his brother Jack uh, has represented Calvin in years gone by um, so maybe a lot of people might be saying he could be a very, very good club bubbler, and that's absolutely fair. That's 100%. And, you know, we can't take away that from the man. And it'd be great to see him try to you know, give, it, give, it a, give it a try, but he doesn't look like he's any interest. In, you know, it's quite sad from that point of view because he's an absolutely clinical finisher. He's a fantastic uh, ball player, so it's a pity. Sean McAvoy, uh, me and you talked about him before. I think he is heading off to New York, uh, America, to chase the... Chase the football dream, fair play to him. That's his own, that's his own option. You can't force anyone to do anything. So away Sean goes, unfortunately. Um, and then I think Brian O'Connell, he's a big fella, midfielder for Rammer. Um, I don't know if has he been asked in. So it's hard to know. Maybe it was Rammer's kind of Lenten season into December. Is Mickey giving some lads a break? Um, is it a case of they're not they're not interested? It's a huge commitment. God only knows. Is Rammer a big enough commitment as it is? We just don't know. And um, with from the ground side of things, we see Connor Madden. Connor Madden was full forward for the throne and Armagh game. Madden can be very hot and cold a lot of the time. Um, I think he believes in his own hype a lot as well. Um, with Connor, like I think, I, I kind of an, an early fella that probably just kind of want to have the feet in the ground because. I think he comes. Like he's a very kind of confident player. He's a kind of he, like a lot of forwards are kind of confident players, but like I think Connor. These kind of wayward shots and all this kind of crack in the vision forward, it can't be any F ups. Like, he can't be taking shots from 50 yards out and expecting to go over the bar from anywhere. Like, it just needs to be pinpoint accuracy this year. So, from the Garner point of view, Oshin Pearson, um, I think he's getting operation on the shoulder. He was part of the 2020 Ulster winning team as well. So, I think he'll not be fit. Kieran Holler Brady, uh, the ACL injury seems to be very bad. So, I don't know if he'll leave the feature this year. So, he could be a huge loss as well. Um, so from the Gauna, I think that'd nearly be it. Um, if I can think of any other players, Key Madden actually the wing forward for Gauna. Um, I think he was he was playing against Armagh, had a pretty good game, uh, passed the ball around well, so done well. Um, and after that, I'd nearly probably need to look at the program, but uh, probably not a great pick really from that. And I think there's as, as I said, Evan Finnegan, the cor- corner back, he's done pretty well. He started both games, um, the throne and Armagh game done well, so not a whole pile of new lads in, but then again. The lads that have probably been there the last two years, two or three years, they probably need to prove a big point too. 
So it's more just of a case, right, the team that has really maybe won a Ulster or maybe had a bit of success in the past kind of gets us up from Division 4. But um, it is funny, Aaron. It definitely is funny. I was only saying to a chap there a couple of weeks ago, geez, there's not many additions here. So why that is, I'm not sure. Is it because the county is such a big ask? Is it maybe embarrassing to be in Division 4? We just don't know, Aaron, because you know yourself with the Dubs, any other county team, it's always very inward in, within the camp, you know? Yeah, like and I suppose you do have a very settled squad there in terms of the, the players that you have. Like you haven't had too many players maybe leaving the panel. And as you said there, you've players like Rod McKernan and Martin Riley and, and a few other lads that I suppose are getting older but are happy enough to, to stick it around. Podrick Faulkner, he's an interesting one. I didn't see him in, in pre-season from what I could tell. Maybe he did play a game and I, I, I managed to miss it. But is he involved in uh, this year or, or what's the crack with him? Yeah, yeah. I think Podrick Faulkner is playing. I think... I don't know how I missed this. Herself said it to me, and then I think it was only in the highlights. Faulkner scored a point against Throne, so I don't know did he come mm. on or was he starting? I must look back at the program. Um, so he, yeah, he's back. He's back. Was, back. Yeah. Jesus Christ, we did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I, was, I was just thinking there because yeah, I remember looking at the yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah. looking at yeah, the, no, the the panel like, and I was thinking yeah. I didn't see him in there, but maybe yeah, maybe I didn't look at the subs. That's probably me again mixing up names or, or whatever. <laughs> no, 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 because I tell you what, I, I was 50-50 by Porrick as well, but Christ bless the service. Uh, we definitely would need Porrick um, without a shadow of a doubt. We need, we need everyone. It's funny, I, I was in town earlier on and I, I seen uh, Bart Riley, so I don't know, has he even committed for the year ahead? In fairness, mm-hmm. look at Marty, if he's not, if he's not about Jesus, he owes nothing to Cavan football. He has been around the block since, I think, 06, 07. So if he was to call it a day, I wouldn't be overly surprised. Um, He's he's a, he's a kind of a Cluxton esque kind of fella, um, not a big media man. And if he was to retire, you know, he wouldn't even hear about it. There'd be no statement, there'd be no no, no interview because Marty's just such a quiet fella, a fantastic, fantastic footballer, one of the best left foots in Ulster. So if he was to go, that could literally be it because he's such a quiet man, you wouldn't hear it. But um, yeah, look, you're just kind of hoping whoever's about would play. Um, it is probably a huge ask. It's it's funny too because even. I know in our group chat uh, for the podcast chat that um, you know we were even thinking about some of the Tyrone boys that left the panel. Uh, Ronan O'Neill retired. A uh, Hugh Pat McGeary, and it's funny and maybe just for another day's discussion, Aaron. But like the discussion or the commitment involved in GA at the minute, and you know Tyrone won the All Ireland last year. But if you're not getting game time, what's the kind of point to a degree? Or if you're pushing like bad trend, like mad, putting all your heart and soul into it, and then you leave the panel the following year. It just goes to show, uh, Aaron, and obviously, again, this is probably for another debate, but uh, the uh, demands for a GA player at the minute are just crazy. Yeah, no, that definitely is. Like, And um, funny enough, I was having a, a similar conversation to someone there the other week, and you know, maybe they should bring in a, a reserve league or, or something like that. I know they do that over in, um, you know, in England and in, in the Premier League and whatnot. Maybe have a, you know, a, another another sort of more games for second string teams. I know obviously they have development squads and whatnot, but something maybe, maybe a you bit might more... get a chance there. Yeah, maybe maybe we won't be on there. We we'll play for uh, Dublin Junior C or Junior D or something like that. You know, get a, get on the bench maybe. <laughs> I might get a game then. Might. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or maybe you know, I have I have some family from. Westmead and Tipperary, so we'll make the use of the the parent rule, anyways, and maybe they'll draft me in. <laughs> yeah, Aaron. In fairness, like uh, I know me and you discussed the county game the whole time, but I think we 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 have to put a money where our mouth mouth is, Aaron, because we we criticise, we review, re- or preview. So hopefully, there might come a day when there's the B or C uh, teams for football. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Looking at looking at Division Four then in total, who would you be backing then to? maybe join you in that promotion race? Like, I mean, what teams maybe would you be most wary of? I know it's a, it's an interesting one because you're looking at some of them teams and you're thinking like, there's really, you know, usually in Division 4, everyone kind of ends up beating everyone. Like, it's, it's a very close sort of division, really. Like, and we've seen teams kind of come out of nowhere in the past, like Carlo and, and Leitrim. And, you know, um, you've had a few other teams there in the past who've gone on runs. So who would you be looking at there maybe that you think could p- potentially be up there in, in that promotion battle with yourselves? Yeah, well, I was looking at it. I think someone was sending in like the bookies odds and bits and pieces. Like, I think Tipperary, you know, I think it, and it probably hasn't been said, and I don't know how the news hasn't reported, but I think Mickey Quinlivan's not about for Tipperary this year. Mm. So that's a huge loss for them. And then two other fellas left, and Brian Cox retired. So yeah. I don't think it'll, leave, it'll not be easy for, for Tipperary as well. Um, you know, Leitrim, they'll obviously have a big push. I just don't think they might not have the quality to go up, but who knows? It's funny, the league's a very funny competition. 
But look at, you know, let's put, let's be honest about it. Us and Tipperary really should be making the push for a promotion this year, no doubt about it. Shouldn't be any hiccups, fingers crossed. Um, but look, I suppose when you're looking at the other teams, Aaron, in Division 4, London, you know, it, <laughs> barring some absolute miracle, uh, the, the London lads will be making a push. I think they'll be staying put. Uh, Wexford, to be honest with you, Aaron, Wexford have been very, very wayward the last couple of years, so I can't see them making much of a push, really. I'd be very surprised. I think there's a lot of stuff that needs to be sorted out there. Paul Galvin leaving a couple of years ago, that really was never addressed. Uh, I don't know, there's not much discussion about that. I think Matty Ford had a lot to say, lot to say about that. Um, who else is in Division 4? Warnford, I think they'd probably be consolidated in Division 4 again, so I can't see there'd be much of a threat there. Obviously, a hurling stronghold. Um, obviously, yourselves, Leitrim, uh, Tipperary. One more team, Aaron, is there? Sligo and Sligo and Carlo, I think. Yeah, Sligo Carlo. Um, look, Sligo. I think Tony McAtee probably has a lot of work to do there. Still, you know, I think he's seen him off the ball there a couple of months ago, and he was he was as honest as the day comes there, and he literally just said, "Right, you know, why mm. would anyone kind of want to play for Sligo with the demands of a GA player at the minute?" And if your manager's saying that, that probably yeah, in in lies the problem, Aaron. I suppose you know. So I think Sligo a lot of like a lot a lot of teams in Division Four have a lot of work to do, but I think. It could be another wild for Sligo, yes. Um, I, again, what you said, Red Oak Murphy for Sligo. Yeah, he's he's, he's he's off the now. Yeah. It a day, mm. did he? So he's gone, and then Carlo. You just don't really kind of know what Carlo. It feels like when Toro O'Brien and Stevie Poacher kind of left Carlo, the kind of wheels fell off the bus a bit, um, and maybe they haven't got the right kind of men in to uh, take them over. So they could be an absolute surprise package. But I think Daniel Ledger's really gone. Paul Broderick. He's gone yeah. as well, isn't he? And then, see, that's big, big name. So, I'll look, Aaron, you know, let's call a spade a spade here. Calvin Tipperary, realistically, because when you look at the other teams, they have a lot of work to do. Don't get me wrong, all the teams in Division 4 have mm. a lot of work to do to get up to standards again, but, God, hey, Calvin and Tipperary, if they weren't to go up this year, Aaron, I don't know what would be wrong, you know? Yeah, like, I think Tipperary have had a lot of players opting out there, and to be honest, I wouldn't... Looking at their league form over the past couple of years, I'd actually be surprised if they got promoted, to, to be perfectly honest. Like, I'd be looking more at maybe Leitrim to, to get up there, mm. considering Emla Mulligan coming back in. And, you know, they were a Division 3 team not too long ago up there. So I'd, I'd probably go for them. But Wexford are, yeah, Wexford are an interesting one. Like, they, they had a good finish the last year when they put a, a decent enough showing up against the Dubs in, in many ways and beat Wicklow yeah. in, in that Leinster Championship game. But like what you said about well, Wexford, like, they're one of them teams that, you know, they could have a, a big win, you know, against maybe a Cavan or a Leitrim, but then they could go out and lose to London. Like, I think the last um, competitive victory London had was over Wexford, you know. So, I think um, I think that would be the big worry with them. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, it, it, it's funny too, and just, uh, it's always a good to have a laugh, but I think in Division 4, there could be some absolute upsets. I hope it's not from a Cavan point of view, but... God knows who London might take a scalp over. Like there is teams there that are kind of struggling for form, momentum, and bits and pieces like that. So London would be absolutely mad to get a win over someone. It would be great to see. It'd be great to see because mm. I know there is passion for London football over there at the minute. So um that is shaking things up. But you're just kind of hoping there is no kind of banana slips really, and you're just kind of hoping for a, a, a clean slate. But um yeah, look at I think with Wexford, Wexford, I know the hurling is absolutely flying at the minute, but it just seems, and I've talked to Manny Ford numerous times about this, I think I've probably said to you a few times before, but um, it just seems to be a big problem. Like, the West will have always a beautiful football. It's Manny Ford, Kieran Ling, Rebbe Barry, uh, PJ Bandle had him on the podcast last year. Like, great, great footballers, Aaron, but they just don't seem to be producing anything from underage, up uh, minor level. It just seems to be an absolutely massive problem. Like I said it to Manny Ford before, um, you know, would you have any interest in kind of coaching or going back at zero stage? Because maybe is there something you know, like above Wexford, like is the, the chairman's and just don't know what kind of what would be going on up there at the minute. So, yeah, realistically, like the teams in Division 4, you feel kind of sorry for them because really, the likes of Sligo, Wexford and um, Carlo and all that kind of stuff, like it's just, there's a lots of lads opting out, lots of lads quitting and uh, it just, you can say there's so much work to do within these counties, but there just doesn't seem to be any growth to play with them. That's, you know, mm. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one, all right, with, with counties like Wexford and, and Sligo, especially when they've definitely had a, 
a lot of success in in the past but it is a hard one sometimes with with teams down in division four like you know you wouldn't have boots on the ground so it's hard to know there could be one or two top class underage players or club players coming through there that you just don't know about but like what you said there like definitely a a lot of work to do for for some of those counties looking ahead to the Ulster draw Antrim obviously up first and then you play either Donegal or Armagh in a semi-final. So I suppose Antrim, like that's probably, you know, if you if you were to pick a team to draw, maybe you'd go for them because obviously they're Division 3 and, and maybe they'll be looking to consolidate in Division 3 or maybe push on, who knows. But what were, what were your thoughts on, on getting Antrum first day out in the, in the Ulster Championship? Ah, yeah, happy, happy. Like in fairness, like, you know, again, we always seem to get the license from Mana. You might get a Monaghan there. So to get Antrim in the first round, you know, we can't really complain. It's it's a fine, fine pass. Um, obviously, we'll be down in Antrim. I think it's down in the wee club tight pitch there. So it's not like it's a mm. case, like obviously case, but that's, for, that's definitely for another discussion case of power. A lot of work to be done there if it, if it does ever transpire. Um, but the wee club pitch, it could be tight. Antrim, again, they had a few games last year. They, they took scouts of teams last year down there. So... Again, you're just probably hoping for no hiccups. But yeah, I suppose happy enough. Um, it's not a bad route. Is it Donegal in the in the semi final? Donegal or who? Armagh. Yeah, Armagh. Yeah. Yeah, them so too, be, yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's a massive year for Armagh as well. Kieran McGeady and all that. So we've had a good record against Armagh the last couple of years in the championship. So yeah, like it, it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the worst. You know, Donegal as well. There's the Donegal with a massive point to prove this year too. But yeah, happy enough. Happy enough. I think. I suppose the big, big thing is, Aaron, and you know, let's again call it spade a spade, but I think it's just about getting away, get out of Division 4. And as well, I suppose you kind of have to look at the positive situation. Like, if you do get promotion, you have a league final, Croke Park, so that'll be good for yeah. the point to do. So get the fans up and get the lads uh, into Croke Park. But yeah, Antrim, it'll be, it'll be stiff enough test, I think. Um, Enda McGinley, competitive band, you know, what, three time All Ireland winner, had a great year with them last year. I think Paddy Cunningham seems to be the only man that he's retired now. So I think he's like the only player that's left the panel. You, you'll have Mick McCann, you'll have Tomas McCann, um, you'll have plenty of talent up there. So it, it could be a stiff enough test. It could be, it could be a stiff enough test. But I think with the league form, um, Mickey Graham will probably not like to hear this, but with the league form, it will be important going into that game because Ulster Championship, anything can happen. But Ah, look, Aaron, you should be looking at a win there. Let's be let's be honest. Yeah, and like what you said earlier, it will be interesting to see where that game is played because I think it's fixed for Corrigan Park. But from what I've heard, because like for Corrigan Park, it, it can't fit as many like fans as maybe another game in the Ulster Championship. So it'll be interesting to see maybe if that gets moved to the athletic grounds or maybe somewhere sort of in between. Um, so or maybe to another club ground there in Antrim. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. But yeah, Donegal or Armagh after that potentially in a in a semi-finals. Like I suppose you could have a bit of a, a reunion with, with Donegal after the, the 2020 final, like I'm sure if that was the the draw in the semi-finals or even Armagh, because I know you had some cracking games with them back in, in 2019 as well. So you know, but looking at a potential Donegal game, like you could see the Donegal lads fired up for that as well. And would it be in a semi final? It's like to be so much at stake there. Oh, yeah. And look at our, I suppose that'd be the one thing. And you're talking, you see, we played Donegal that time in November and our mad, the pitch tight, narrow, mm. suited cabin. And a lot of people were saying, Jesus, if that if that exact game was just like the year before, pipe not day in clone is July, sun spitting the stones. And look what Donegal did to us. So, I suppose that'd be the one thing, Mickey Graham. It'd be a huge test for us, for everyone involved, and it'd be a mouthwatering game. If like obviously we need to get over Antrim, of course, for us. Let's get them the respect they deserve. Um, but yeah, look, it, it would be exciting. You know, the Donegal boys would, would love to put one over us again, especially um after getting bet in the twenty twenty final. So the big thing is, you know, it, this game will be played in what are we talking May June? Because all Ireland's July, isn't it? That's so right, May, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that kind of thing. So, the weather would be good. Donegal, oh, you know, it would definitely be a tough... And obviously, we have to give Armagh, you know, the credit yeah. to, 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 yeah. to play, play, play Donegal as well. So, that'll be a mighty water game itself. But um, either or team, either team will definitely pr- uh, like pose various different questions, pose similar, like a similar task, because both teams are definitely on the rise. You like to see Armagh at the minute... The O'Neill brothers and oh man, they're just flying, they're doing quite well. And obviously the backroom team, we all know about that. So either team will pose a massive, massive threat. Um regarding our ma, we played them in what uh in 2019 on the way to the, the Ulster final, played them twice, had to put them away the second day. So you know, our ma have always been big, physical, competitive team. So either team are just prove a massive task, I think. 
Yeah, and no, I was going to say to you about the qualifiers and, and potentially going into going into the qualifiers. Maybe if you did get beat in the semi-finals or did get beat by Antrim, but of course you do have the tier two championship that's, that's coming in now, and with yourselves obviously in division four, like even a promotion, unfortunately wouldn't be able to to spare you out of there. So, what are your thoughts on that? And if you weren't to reach an Ulster final, going into a a tier two championship and, and all the rest, because it does have a lot of mixed opinions and some people are maybe thinking it'd be a good thing and some people are against it. What's, what's your own opinion? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's funny too, where like, I think football's football at the end of the day. And like, I suppose it's saying it comes to kind of sport, football, life, anything at all. You probably make your own page, you make your own look, Aaron. And I think if you want to set high standards, you need to do that. Like if, if you want to go anywhere in football, life, sport, anywhere at all, you need to maintain high standards. And we are like if we get ourselves into that situation, is because of the results from games. It's because you know we probably missed them couple of chances. It's because you know we didn't put enough hunger, desire into game. So it's just so important that we hit the ground running and don't have any f ups because you know we just need to maintain high standards. And as I keep saying, obviously like it, it, it's mad up here. The the the, mad, the football up here. So it's just. So important that we probably, you know, refrain from that and just just stay at high, stay at high standard and see where it takes us. But again, you know, the tier two is that the adult, is that the cup? What uh, the Talchin Cup, yeah, the call Talchin Cup. So yeah, look, I suppose it'd be something to compete for as well, Aaron. You know, if, if you did, if you did get to the latter end of it. But again, you probably want to be going for the for the big for the for the big house, I suppose. But um, yeah, it's it's a competition. Um, but I think it's sports you make your own luck and I think you know it'll just be it'll just be so important to have have a big 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 day, uh, year this year um but I don't know what like what were your thoughts on the tier two like I know obviously the Dublin are kind of you know at top off so all the time but like what did you make of it when it did come about mm. yeah I thought it was like it, it definitely has a I think the main thing really is how they market it really and whether they show the games and whether they promote it I think that's the main thing I think the the idea and the principle behind it, I think I like in terms of there being another competition for teams that get knocked out in, in the provincial series. You know, obviously, if, if teams lose and lens their semi finals or, or quarter finals, like there is another competition for them. Yeah, co- competition for them there. I would have still liked them to keep the qualifiers and maybe, you know, the, the teams who get knocked out in round one and round two of the qualifiers, maybe then you have your Talchin Cup rather than, you know, because we see with the way the draws go sometimes, like, for example, like if Go, let's say Galway get relegated from Division Two and they get beat by Mayo in the open round of the Connacht Championship, that's them in Tier Two. And you know, if Galway were on the other side of the draw and Connacht, they'd probably make a final. So I think it's kind of the the there's definitely some tweaks maybe they could do with it, but I think the principle and the idea behind it could work. But again, it's it's one of them things with the GA like they need to get it right and the promotion needs to be right and. You know, games need to be shown at the right times, and um, it's and coming he, in this year. It's coming. It's coming, it's coming in this year. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. From what I hear, anyway, like it was supposed to come in last year. That wasn't the case, obviously, because of COVID. They suspended it. So unless there's going to be another announcement now in a couple of weeks, and they're going to suspend it. But um, no, I'm pretty sure it is in. I might double check that again just to make sure. But I'm pretty sure it is in now in, uh, in 2022. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I suppose it'd, it'd be a bit, a bit of an incentive as well to go on and win a cup because you know mm. I think there is obviously that devastation because I think the time, the effort, the preparation that goes into a county season, and like when you're knocked out of your provincial, you're just thinking, right, what next? Back door up the bloody Sligo or Wicklow or something because I think when you're knocked out, it'd be great to have some more of an incentive to think, right, you know, we worked all hard, we worked so hard in like for our provincial, the championship and everything goes with that iron so it's just think to have that second layer or that second base to fight for something to try and win something would actually spur a lot of a lot of teams on and make a bit of a long season out of it great for fans as well um probably would be in support of it so just kind of lengthen the season for the players as well because you know there'd be a lot of lads you know willing to kind of fight for the place in the Cavan team to represent Cavan no matter what competition it is going to be it's great to see kind of lads fighting for the jersey uh, for, or for the year that's in it uh, for the for the division four bits and pieces so um yeah like you know it, it can't be i suppose a bad thing because if, if maybe if it means more games trying to you know win a cup i can't see a whole pile being wrong with it aren't you know yeah, and I was having a look there. Like it definitely is in, and in, in 2022, anyways, the final is the the ninth of July. So who knows? I mean, maybe two days out in, in Crow Park this year, which uh, 
you know, probably wouldn't come around too often for Cavan. So may- maybe it was all part of the plan. Maybe he's have all <laughs> orchestrated this, you know, to, to get two days out in, in, in the big the smoke. Q Cavan who are the Q Cavan who are, <laughs> yeah. and that's what we were always described as. And I tell you what, Binky Graham is no. The man wasn't born yesterday, so who knows? It could be a, a subtle way of saying that, right? You know, maybe we, maybe we don't have the talent of that, so we're, we we don't want to fight for the big honor, so we we'll, we'll go a different way about it. Um, yeah, the funny, funny, funny fact actually. Uh, the last time we played twice in Croker would have been twenty thirteen. Uh, division around four game against London, and then an All Ireland quarter final against one of the best teams to ever do it. So uh, that was our experience in Croker twice, and then our mat we played worst common in twenty fourteen in a league final. Then kind of after that, kind of slipped away. Yeah, kind of, kind of matter, right? Like ultimately, then what what would you see as a success then for for Cavan this year is the main the main aim just getting out of Division Four or could you know is there is there is there much to think of maybe in the All Ireland as well or what would you be thinking? Yeah, like it looking, I suppose, and it's it's it's, it's can obviously kind of hard to make any kind of predictions, but like realistically looking at it, like and just probably everyone blue in the face of saying that this is, but you need to get out of Division Four. I think that's an absolute, that's the king, and just see whatever really happens after that. Aaron, and no, obviously you don't, you want to keep your standards high, but even have a run to the Tulsa Cup. I, I need to look forward to that Tulsa Cup actually. You know when you do mention it, and um, obviously you know. If we get over the line against Antrim, that'd be great. That'd be a step in the ladder. Um, a potential a, pen, a potential Ulster semi final against either Donegal or Armagh be a very very stiff test either way. So that that that'd be definitely very exciting and a challenge that the boys I think should be and would be up for. So that that could something could come off of that. If we could potentially potentially get over the line against that in that an Ulster final potentially, but obviously, geez, we have a lot of hurdles jumping for all that. So I just think the main aims is just. You know, get out of Division Four. That's an absolute fact. Blood new lads. Give lads that maybe didn't get a chance. Give them that chance now. Let's try and inherit a scoring four that we've been looking for the last five or six years. Let's try and get that sorted after all this time. Christ bless to save us. I'm still saying that. Um, and just kind of get that confidence back within Calvin Football. I know that Ulster 2020 win in was fantastic, but. I think we had this thing, and I said this before, we won that Ultra Championship in 1997 and we've just clinged on to it and clinged on to it. I think for us to progress, we probably need to just write one Ultra in 2020, fantastic, brilliant during the COVID year, line in the sand and just move on now and just just kind of keep trying to push on and just, you know, put a bit of pride back in the jersey because Jesus, you know, the 30, 35 lads that are willing to fight for Calvin this year, they'll be mad to kind of get us back on the map and just get us going again, Aaron, and... Uh, Put a smile on everyone's face to get earned. Yeah, and I suppose looking at the overall big picture then, I mean, any teams you're excited to see in, in 2022 and in, in terms of the entirety of the, the National Football League across four divisions and, and potentially into the All-Ireland Series? Yeah, well, I suppose when you when you look at it, um, Jack O'Connor going back up to Kerry, that'll be very exciting to see what with, what way that works out. Paddy Talley is going to be giving him a hand, so obviously that's the share of the defence. That'll be very interesting. Uh, the Dubs yourself, That'll be very, very interesting. I know, obviously, the last couple of weeks, um, you know, Philly McMahon called it a day. Um, I think that's all your retirement so far, isn't it? Kevin McMahon as well, yeah. Oh, Kevin McMahon as well, yeah. Um, Kevin McMahon as well. So, obviously, the, the base of the old guards really gone at this stage. Like, when you look at... Like, I actually watched the 2011 All-Ireland Final against Kerry the other day. I, I, I think I actually watched it directly after your Kevin McMahon uh, chat. I just got so kind of buzzed up. You, you yeah, made me excited yeah. there. Um, so, uh, <laughs> that's why it happened. Uh, one, one of the classics, anyway. I tend to watch it once, game. Game. Once, Brill- once a year. Once a year, you know. Br- brilliant game, yeah. I was, I was in the lower tavern for myself. It was a great game. Um, so, yeah, no, it, it was brilliant. So, I think... The old guard seems to be gone. When you look at that 2011 Dublin team, a lot of them lads basically have moved on. So the response from Dublin will be very, will be intriguing. Did they beat, who were the playing today? Longford, was it? Did they beat them? Um, no, they beat, they beat Longford already. Yeah, I think yeah. it might be, I think it might be Loud is, is up next in, in preseason. Or t- they were playing today, were they not? No. I think, yeah, I think they were playing, I think, I think um, tomorrow, I think, or maybe later today. I'm not too sure. I'm, I'll have to, I'll right, have to look it up. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. Pre- preseason yeah, no, competitions, you know. Oh, who knows? I heard, hard to keep track. But it, 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 the response from the Dubs would be intriguing. It's good to see Brian Fenton taking a series. He's back in Ernest as well. Uh, who else are we talking? Tyrone. Tyrone. Um, it'd be intriguing to see what way they're fixed um, with, with, with how they get on. I know, obviously, with the COVID and everything last year, their response. Um, I can't see them breathing too much in. I think Armagh 
um, Armad uh, bet them in the McKenna Cup as well. So it'll just be, yeah, it'll just be interesting to see what way Sharon can kind of adapt uh, this year. Will they go for the back to back? I think they're four favourites with the bookies, so that kind of speaks volumes. Um, so it, we'll just have to wait and see how they get on. They have the panel of players to push for an All Ireland again, um, and then you have Mayo as well, Aaron. So. We just have to wait and see. I think Kieran McDonald left the Mayo or backer team a couple of weeks after the All Ireland final. Whatever happened there, I'm not sure. Mayo will come again. So I don't know. Maybe surprise packages from that. I think down in Monaghan actually our near neighbours Liam Shee going up there. That's actually intriguing. Whatever he'll be helping out uh, Banty McEnany with. Um, and obviously any other surprise packages. I was watching briefly was Russ Common last night against Galway in the Con- or the final and. Jesus, you know, was common. I think they have a lot of work to do. I know Stevie Poulter left them. Uh, Galway, they have a lot of work to do. I think Port Joyce, he knows that himself. Um, to kind of get Shane Walsh and Jamie Comer fully fit and firing for the year ahead. And any other teams? Are there any other really kind of top eight teams around they can nearly think of? I think that's nearly the mall covered, really. It's top eight. Mm. Um, kind of surprise packages, but yeah, hey, maybe, suppose, maybe Derry even as well. Like Derry, or Derry yeah, 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 Derry could be in for a huge year. Um, you know, Rory Gallery, he'll, he'll be all guns this, and then you've Connor Glass absolutely flying forward. So they'll be a surprise package, but everyone kind of knows how good Derry are after the season had last year. So fingers crossed, Aaron, we're in for an exciting year. And my God, isn't it just great to have the full fixture list back for the league? Yeah, I know the McKenna Cup, it has its you know, you know, complaints, and obviously the Boron Cup and uh, the McGrath Cup, but it, it is great to have the football back. I know we give out about it, we give out about the streams, we give out about this, and all that goes with it, but by, by the way, if also GA can uh, short, sort out the 12 year old, a lot of people give it out about that. Uh, they can sort that out, maybe, but uh, it's great to have a back air and uh, we look forward to it. But I think overall, the response from Dublin can drone get back on the horse again and kind of maybe prove people wrong. That's what's always done. Can Kerry get a push out of Jack O'Connor? And you know, can James Horan finally get over the line with that Mayo bunch of players? Yeah, yeah, no, it will be interesting, all right. And like, like what you said there, like it was nice to see, um, yeah, Galway Roscommon being streamed last night, anyways, on, on YouTube, free. but yeah, for free, <laughs> for free. Like, and as, as I was saying to you there off air, like it's, it's a hard one to justify. Like, I, I paid for a, a yearly GA Go pass there, like, and it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to justify then when you start paying for, for pre season games and, and whatnot. But I was having a look there, you were right, anyway. Yeah, it was Dublin, Dublin beating Longford there, 16 points to five, so yeah. You were yeah. you were right there. So three wins from three, anyways, which is good enough from from a Dublin point of view, considering it has been a very changed and a mixed team in in preseason. But who ultimately would you be looking at then potentially to to win the All Ireland? You know, or who would you see maybe as the front runners or favourites? Like I think I was having a look at the bookies' odds there, and Toronto are still forward favourites, and Dublin and Kerry are a joint favourites at the minute. Mayo are, are still up there, and Donegal maybe I think are in a fifth. But who would you be backing there maybe to go all the way? Yeah, like I suppose it's 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 the million dollar question, I suppose, with the year ahead. But as I said a couple of seconds ago, it's more just the response from a lot of these lads. And I think with Kerry, like it, it's hard to know, like you know, get Jack O'Connor is Jack get Jack O'Connor first, and obviously his third since his Kerry manager, but it, it's hard to kind of just say, right, Jack, win win that elusive all Ireland medal uh, for Kerry obviously since 2014. So that's a lot of pressure up there. Like I think Paul O'Shea did describe it so well in that documentary time. T- that time, like they are a very, very hungry group of people. Christ, and that's me probably being PG about it. Um, so Jesus Christ, and all Ireland and nothing. So that's absolutely massive pressure. Can this, you know, can Jack O'Connor get an All Ireland out of that team? It will be interesting. But I think the Dubs probably will have a sting in the tail. I see Kieran Archer. Archer was involved today, so it'll be interesting to see if he's involved for the rest of the year. But, um. It'll just be interesting, you know, like what way maybe Dublin approached the games this year, what kind of style of play they go with, and um, they'll everyone will be watching them. So to win the All Ireland, God, January, it'd be, it, it, it's a hard, hard, hard one to call. But I suppose if it's to put a few pound on it, you're probably looking if Jack O'Connor can get his house in order, get the kind of players playing with a good bit of confidence. You could be looking at Kerry, but. Again, the, the backlash from Dublin could be huge as well. So it's a very, very hard one to call, Aaron. Um, and obviously, Tyrone could, you know, they could really go go at it again. I just can't see Mayo winning it, to be honest with you. Sorry, any Mayo fans, if, if, if you're to give it out. But I just think that that curse is going to go on and on and on. Um, but I think it, it's funny. It's funny at this time of year. I don't know who, who, who obviously, you're going to be picking Dublin, uh, no doubt about it. But um, Lucas, I'll, just, I, I'll go with Dublin. I'll go with Dublin. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose like Dublin. It's hard to know. Like, it's, yeah, it is a tough one. Like, I think you will really need to see the league because I think from a Dublin point point of view, like, really, what I want to see is, you know, other players there maybe making an impact in the team. Like, we know the quality that Dublin have and the likes of your Fentons and your Con O'Callaghan's and and all the rest. I'd, I'd I would like to see Calm Pascal get a good run at the league. Because I do think there is a yeah. good player in there, and I think even when he came off the bench a couple of times last year. He did make an impact. Like he nearly scored a goal against Mayo. I remember he scored a goal against Kildare and it was wrongly disallowed. So I think there is a player in there, and I would like to see him start in the league and, mm. and give him game time because I think there's a there's enough quality there for Dublin, anyways. To you know, I don't think winning the league is, is that important, but you obviously you don't want to get relegated. But I think there's enough quality there, anyways, to at least stave off that. And even in Leinster, then as well. Like I don't think Dublin need to be you know, at their absolute peak, no, really. But no. at the same time, though, they can't get into the same habit that they, that, that they had last year where there was, um, you know, underwhelming performances and whatnot because we've seen that this can potentially creep up on you. I was intrigued, and I, geez, I know obviously everyone has different ways of doing things, and obviously it looks like Stephen Cluxton's career has finished with Dublin. But I just think, and I know, God, I know he was never a media man or anything, and he, there no no social media, no interviews, bits and pieces, but I don't know, what your thoughts was on Stephen Cluxton. Like, during the way that Kevin McManaman doesn't even say the comedian man himself, but he released a statement, Philly Mack released a statement. Like, I, a Cluxton played for the Ducks for, what, 20, 20 years, best keeper in Ireland by country mile. Should he have released some sort of a statement just out of a mark of respect for the coaches he's had, the fans? Like, I know maybe Jesus Christ, like, he's, he's just gone into the sunset now. He's probably playing a five, game of five side as we speak. But, like, should he have done something? Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting one because I think like in, in one, there's two ways of looking at it really. I think first of all, he probably he, he doesn't know anything to anyone really for what he's given to mm. Dublin down the years over the past 20 years and maybe he doesn't have to put out a statement himself but I would have definitely liked Dublin GA to put out a statement and just say, look, he's... That's insane. Yeah, yeah, like just on, on his behalf and just say, look, listen, he's he stepped away and, and, and retired because, you know, and, and, and then, he, you know, has he opted out and maybe he might come back next year? You just don't know. Right, like this year, you know. Yeah, yeah, there's just a lot of real um, unknowns. You know what I mean? Like maybe Dublin GA would put out a statement if he has actually retired and maybe he hasn't. But again, it's that, yeah. it's that unknown of, you know, maybe if he was coming back later in the year. But yeah, I, I think at this stage, to be honest, I think Dublin just, you know, there's no one player that's bigger than, than any team you know and as much as Cluxton you know he is Mr Dublin in, in many ways for what he's given to Dublin over the past 20 years but I think at this stage you know they just have to move on and it has to be about Evan Comerford and to be honest with you even if Cluxton was to come back into the team you know I think I think the main priority has to be Comerford because you know I don't think it's really fair on him as well that if you're bringing well the future as well become yeah like if you're, if you're bringing Cluxton back in for championship games then he comes back in and then you're, you're dropping Comerford back out. Like, I think Comerford should be the number one now. And I think Dublin have been pretty ruthless with a lot of players in the past five or ten years. Even think of Bernard Brogan, Dermot Connolly, you know. And I think I think, I think think Desi has to be the same way. And he has to say, look, Evan Comerford's the number one now. And if, if Stephen Cluxton mm. wants to come back into the team, he has to earn his way back into the team, you know. But, but it's just, uh, geez, and we don't want to go through too much of a rabbit hole with it, but it just boggles belief. And I, I, I know I keep saying the point, but like he doesn't do the media, doesn't do this, that, or the other. But I just think it was imperative that even last year, there should have been some commun- communication where as right, we know what Stephen Cooks is at. Like Desi Farrell, I don't know if the Desi and Stephen fall out. We, we, we have no idea. Obviously, Desi is a quiet man himself. But like there had to be some clarification last year where the best keeper in Ireland to do it you know, there has to be some bit of clarification there. I know Desi said there a couple of weeks ago and, and probably in a different sort of manner, like, oh, he'd not be about, like, he, he couldn't even still confirm if Stephen Cluxton's retired or whatever the hell the story is. So mm. it's just a funny one. And I, I think even out of Stephen's regard, like, and I know he, he looks like a fella that has the utmost respect for everyone. Like, he sh- I, there should have been some Dublin, like, geez, Dublin have a very active social media following, very active social media manager, no doubt, uh, there had to be something. Um, it's funny too, he keeps himself to such great nick. I don't know, it's the case of Desi having to go and a new man coming in and bringing in Stephen again. Was the COVID breach completely? Did, did, did that drive Clux over the wall or over the bridge? It's, it's hard to know, but I just think if he is gone, there had to be something said or there had, some statement because Christ bless the savers. We're not talking about a junior B player here, Aaron, you know? Yeah, I suppose, yeah, a lot of speculation and a lot of if, buts and maybes and maybe if 
you know, in, in 10 years time, maybe Desi is on, maybe on this podcast or, or a different podcast and maybe, you know, he, he speaks a bit about it or maybe he writes a book or, or something like that. Maybe that's when it will, it will all come out or maybe Cluck's will write a book. I'm sure. He's de- I'm sure <laughs> he, he will. Yeah. Yeah. I'm he sure will. he's, de- I'm sure he's definitely had a lot of approaches anyway to, uh, 100%, yeah. to, to write a book. Cause that would definitely be a bestseller and no all doubt about it. But, um, yeah, but sure. Look, we could, we could go on and on about Dublin and, and Cluxton and all the rest. I suppose we'll have to we'll have to wait and see what happens um, for the rest of the year. But yeah, look, cheers, John, for coming on as always. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll link down your your podcast down below. And as we were saying earlier, yeah, like I'm happy to to be on your show and, and be a regular feature for a lot of the the National League All Ireland games this year. So yeah, make sure for a lot of people watching to get on over there, subscribe and uh, yeah, stay tuned for for all the podcasts over there as well. So yeah, cheers, John, for coming on. No worries at all, Aaron. Delighted to have you on and uh, take care, sir.